Okay, now to finish off this e the example, and I'll also work with the example of continental drift, um, Newton's colleagues at the time when he uh, proposed gravity and proposed the calculus and everything else, um, they rejected his ideas at first because they couldn't uh, grasp the concept of action at a distance. And as a matter of fact, we still haven't figured out the workings of gravity, and that's the whole concept of what string theory is supposed to do, well, that and relativity and the interconnections with quantum mechanics. But that's another side note. Um, so the thing, of course, was though, is that people started looking for this ether concept of you know why planets attracted or or why the masses worked. But eventually, it just simply bore out that I uh, um, you know just simply bore out. And what's interesting is that the theory of gravitation uh, eventually did get accepted, um, just based on you know a sheer hammering of mathematics and stuff like that. Um, I think there was actually, and they finally did get some working laws and theories as to how it worked or what have you. Just repeated experiments over and over again. What's funny is that parapsychology does have that, but. Um, in this analogy, but they don't have that mechanism of why it works, and it's just it's not within the mindset of people to be able to uh, understand the concept of you know maybe even spontaneous. Um, like I, I understand the idea of that somebody was suggesting about string theory, and um, if the strings are actually affected by even the slightest thought, or even by the slightest uh, you know chemical reaction, or what have you, or or even the slightest uh, you know quantum uh, phenomena. Like if strings are constantly being pulled, then you know if one string pulls another string in someone else's head, or pulls a bunch of strings which affect someone else's brain, that would you know that would be plausible. But again, we need to prove string theory first, and then actually determine that uh, gravitational distortions or other things like that are affecting. We'd have to measure for that. But again, I digress. Um, I guess um, now the thing is that um, I guess basically the point is that science is not necessarily a belief system. But um, what it is, it's attempt. It's an attempt to. Um, it's an attempt to. It's an attempt to interpret, um, if you will. Oh, sure, no problems. It's, okay. it's a. It's an attempt to. Um, I'm not sure if interprets the right word. More like try to uh, understand the generalities and understand how the things connect from one place to another. I mean, for example, the field of physics has a whole bunch of realm of laws. And then when it starts touching on certain laws, those laws uh, become a central part for chemistry. And then certain laws of chemistry apply for biology. And then, you know, and each discipline affects each other. Now, of course, people may, you know, hyper specialize in one discipline, but they eventually have to touch on the laws of another discipline. and. What science does in its totality is explain how a large chunk of these laws interconnect with each other. Now, parapsychology is kind of like the very last one down the bunch, and so far, um, you know, once I figure th physics is fully formed, then the remaining explanations for parapsychology, um, you know, either in conventional psych uh, psycho psychological formats, or if there's another physical explanation, you know, say string theory, you know, it will it will become apparent as it goes up the line. You know what I mean? Like, but it'll it'll take time for parapsychology to come up with a theory. I mean. Gravity, uh, you know, the, the idea, you know, to get a fully formed theory of gravity, uh, the bending of space time, where mass actually bends space time, and thus, you know, things roll down a slope. I mean, that theory, um, you know, I mean, even though Newton's theory was accepted, um, you know, and actually this is one of the ones, to skeptics watching this, I would uh, debunk your idea of we require a mechanism theory to accept uh, parasitic phenomena. Um, I'm going to put it on this analogy. Newton's laws of gravity, um, we still had the concept of the laws, but we didn't have an idea of how gravity worked until, or at least we didn't have a rough idea of how gravity worked or how mass is attracted to each other, um, you know, or, or what have you, until uh, we actually did have the idea of bends in space-time. And I'll explain why. Because the thing is, without a bend in space-time, uh, without a bend in space time, you don't have an idea of, uh, you know, or at least a partial explanation. We still don't even understand how gravity fully works yet, but we accept it. So the thing is that with the given anomaly, we should at least accept the possibility that telepathy might exist. Again, what we have to deal with is the replication issues, and you know, but again, those are the other variables. And I've already stated in other videos about what we actually have to deal with about that. But my point is, is that rejecting uh, the concept of telepathy just because we don't have a theory of how it works. Um, or like rejecting plate tectonics just because of the idea of um, we didn't, uh, or rejecting continental drift because we didn't have the theory of plate tectonics. That is a slightly faulty analogy because um, Newton's laws of gravity were accepted, uh, were still accepted uh, about a century after his working. Um, you know, again through sheer rep re uh, repetition of experimentation. And regardless of that, um, we didn't have a full idea of how it worked. We didn't even get a, a, a real partial theory. Okay, I'm, I'm talking on planetary levels here, I should mention. We didn't really get a theory of that until um, until uh, Newton, uh, sorry, until Einstein came up with the theory of relativity. And now that we know that there are bends in space-time, we can now know that, uh, you know, that, well, again, those bends in space-time might cause objects to roll down a certain amount, you know, and kind of on a slope, uh, you know, so to speak. You know, and then, of course, that, you know, the force of that is re trying to push it back up the, uh, you know, is trying to push it back up the slope uh, as the, you know, the acceleration is trying to push it back up. And then it goes back down, you know, and 
and that's of course how the moon would maintain its orbit or something like that. Like we've got a concept now, we've got a conceptual framework for gravity, um, but we still accepted Newton's laws, um, you know, or the concept of gravity, um, you know, by the 19th century just through repetitious experiment. So if we can deal with the last of the kinks and the Gans field and other stuff, we should accept um, psychic phenomena at least initially until we can figure out how they work. Um, you know, it may be a century or more before we actually finally have a theory as to how they work. Um, Again, I note that I said after we've dealt like with such things as the issue of you know of proper replicability and that sort of thing, but um, now I'm detracted from my main point, which was in relation to your video. You were talking about us all being interconnected uh, with with uh, with minds and everything. Well, the thing is, or or that you know that our our minds are a a, a projection of you know uh, that everything is a projection you know and but you know both an outside example and a projection of our mind. Well, the thing is that um, if that theory is true, and uh, you know again I'm just saying if. There is still one problem with that. The fact is, though, is that uh, to the best of my knowledge, not a single psychic master or uh, you know a single um, you know mystical master or what have you, has been able to uh, get to the point where they could be shot and repel bullets with their body. Um, you know, I mean, the, the the only examples of even macro telekinesis that we have are with large objects. There's been never a single person who's been able to stop a bullet with the power of their mind, um, or there's never been anybody who's been able to jump off a cliff and uh, you know and fly across to the other side or stuff like that. You know. Um, Again, you know, like using the power of their mind by altering the system around them. So quite clearly, um, if we are in a system where, again, it's the universal mind or what have you, there is a um, either an well, maybe not necessarily external force, but there is a um, there are limits to what we can do, even as a collective mindset, um, with affecting this reality. There are apparently limits to that. Uh, the micropsychokinesis levels are a prime example of this. Like there are limits to what macro telekinesis can do. Like you know, there's there seems to be like limits as to what you know micro levels can do, macro levels can do if the scientific studies are actually accurate. You know, there there are limits to this. Again, hypothetically speaking. So the point being that um, I think that if there is a universal mind that um, you know, or if there's two sides of the same coin or something, then there is another. Um, factor, if you will, into the system, which is, uh, or a reason or something else that we've generated the, the universe that we're living in, if we, if you will, if we have done that, uh, or there is a reason the way the, the, there is a reason why the universe is the way it is. And because of that, um, de facto, we still have to work within certain amounts of that system. Like we, we have to understand the concept of, um, I can't walk through you. Um, if I walk into you, I will bump into you. Like there's still, you know, you know, the, uh, so the best, like, or, or if I jump off a cliff, I'm not going to be able to, you know, I, I might be able to survive that with broken bones, but I'm not going to be able to, um, you know, I'm not going to fly, uh, you know, like, like Superman or something like that. Like, we've, we've never had an instance of that beyond, you know, yogic flying. You know, like, there seems to be apparently limits on, you know, every single one of these uh, psi phenomena seems to have a limit to it. Like uh, telepathy, with the experimentation, there's only been, like, you know, a few percentage accuracy, maximum of 50% accuracy level for overall studies with Rupert Sheldrake's work. Uh, precognition, only a statistically significant deviation, but nowhere near 100%. Psychokinesis, like a 1% deviation with the pair studies. You see, like, there seems to be limits to what can actually be done with all this. Like, even with this d deviation from chance or what have you, it's never 100%. You know, like, there's not... You know, like there's there's limits to what this sort of capability can do, and from that there's you know there's got to be other factors or other stuff in the system. You know, like granted we were affecting it, but that the same vice versa that there are too many factors in the system which are all affecting each other for us to be able to manipulate the system in that way. There's like other factors which might inhibit our own capabilities from doing that, and um, because of that or the universal system, we are going to have to learn to fluid, uh, you know, to flow within that and understand that science does have a place in trying to ex better explain that system. So this way we can know how to work within it um, as we're attempting to uh, figure out better ways to change it, both in politics and religion and uh, you know in hard science and even in, you know in, in economics. Like we have to actually work with what is, and you know even in too many systems like economics and politics and stuff like that. You're right, people are fearful and they don't actually take a look at okay well there's a new anomaly we've got to try to figure out how does this fit into the existing uh, work frame you know amending what is you know even if it requires a drastic amendment to actually figure out uh, where this stuff works into it now if it's an anomaly uh, you know it's not just a statistical fluke it will replicate several times you get my idea anyway um, I hope that pretty well discarded again I am I know I'm being a little bit vague but I only have two 10 minutes time segments and you know that sort of thing. So, um, if I have, if I've covered everything, uh, great. Um, if not, do leave comments or give me another video reply um, asking for clarification on some issues. And great. Uh, hopefully, we can talk about this tomorrow, and I can uh, make the conversation the two-way conversation you guys have been having a three-way, and get in on this too. Cool. Toodles.